Okay, after that very long stream yesterday, we're back again for Advent of Code 2022, um, day 17. So, oh man, day 16 was a doozy of a day. Um, I did not end up finishing part 2 in my in the full stream. I unfortunately did have to sleep at 4am to wake up for work the next day. Um, but, on the way to and from and a little bit of during work, I was able to think about the problem and I tried to avoid spoilers and I was able to get something that runs um, for part 2 in Solset. It may not be the nicest thing and it may leverage a lot of parallelism to run in you know, under 5 minutes, but it did spit out the right answer, so I'm really happy about that. It's a surprisingly deep question, I think, so I do want to explore it some more uh, independently before seeing what other people did, trying to get that runtime down to something that, you know, runs on old hardware and not just this machine that I'm streaming, you know, 1080p video from and using all cores to run a bunch of stuff in parallel. So once I make some progress with that, I think I'll probably do another maybe not like a live stream style video, but a recap video explaining uh, that problem because I think it's really cool. Um, it's not a pro uh, like a problem I would have expected to see in Evan of Code, especially, you know, this many years on from uh, when it started in 2015, but it was really cool, I feel. So um, hats off to Eric for writing a really cool puzzle. Um, but now, uh, we will shift focus to today's problem, new day, new problem. Um, two somewhat difficult days in a row. I'm wondering if this will be a reprieve or if it's a difficult weekend problem. I mean, if yesterday, Thursday night was uh, that problem, if this becomes a difficult like Saturday crossword type thing, uh, I am a bit scared about what we're going to get. But we will see, and hopefully yesterday was the only day that I don't finish the problem in one sitting. And hopefully I can actually catch up on my sleep too. Uh, 
this guy is gonna be just zero zero one zero two zero three zero. And then this guy is gonna be um, zero 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 one zero one one. Great. Yep. Pattern will push the rock. Seven units wide. After uh, how does it reach the floor? Is my question? Seven wide. Each rock of Christo's left edge is two units away from the left wall. Okay. Say hi to zero right now. So we'll move it. don't shift if we're going this way, um, we try to move down, right? So we're gonna move and then fall. Uh-huh, so... Or, uh... 
where p is equals p um, p plus, I guess, we're falling down, so it's going to be negative. Will this be consistent? For locking in place, then we move on to the next rock. So we just want to probably the rock we're picking is here. This isn't quite right. Let's do a bit of
Oh, we want to go highest plus three, right? here oh wait but hmm, why didn't we go up higher wait we should be offset oh also this should about the lowest point, right? They spawn in three above. Three units above the highest rock in the floor. Yeah, so if it's bottom edge, then we should actually be... Oh, do I define these rocks? X, Y, but still, these ones should be uh, defined in terms of this is the ground, and then we'll build up. Oh, it kind of was that actually. Aligned from the left, right? So this is gonna be one, two. This piece here should look like uh, zero, zero, one, zero, two, zero. Uh, should be two, one, and two, two. This piece should look like zero, one. There's probably some good magic to just like swap things. And here we want to be zero zero. I mean it works, but just for internal consistency. Let's do this. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so we put this one down and then this guy lands on top of us this way and then start with the X shifted over um, by 2 so we need to move east times 2 okay this looks right this is sort of what's happening I think so 2023 oh we're overshooting Coming to rest the right spots. Uh, two blank, and then we plus, and then we're on top, and then.
everything here triggers a move, so this should be correct now. Uh, no, we We're doing the right moves now, 1, 2, 3, and then we shift 2, and then 1. So let's see. We went here, we landed. We start above. Maybe I do want to do a full visualization, if I can't work it out from here. So, this rock is falling. Uh, this lands in the right spot, it's, it's this one that's problematic. So, it goes, it starts up here, it goes left, left. It started two away, like this. It should have gone right, right. Hmm. We're showing three moves. Is this right? It moves right, right, but the X doesn't move. Right, but the X doesn't move. Oh, and then left again. before landing. So I think we need to spawn up one more. Okay. This one starts falling. Uh, we go left, it falls, we go right, it falls, we go left, it falls, we go right, it falls, and then we come to rest. So this one starts here, we should move uh, left one and fall, right one then fall, right one then fall, and then left, right. We go here, then fall, then we go here, then fall, then we go here, then fall, then we go here and fall, but we aren't shifting over. How do we write such buggy code? One, two, zero, oh, is six. Oh wait, no, it was right. Oh wait, we don't continue, we always fall. I don't know why I wrote. Oh, we're not doing the translation. I was like, why does this code not make any sense? Okay, very dumb. Let's 
sun now, I think. We are overshooting here. So we always move. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we move to the right, six. This shouldn't have triggered, right? We shouldn't have moved because at least. Okay, so I think this is right. But I think we do start one higher. I guess we always move ourselves. Self. Is the logic there for that? I mean, here we check. It's like we, we fall, we move, and then we. We try to fall and see if we would overlap. I think that's correct. This should be three, and then we just put the floor at negative one. This also this feels more wrong. Uh, so we lock it at two. Okay, maybe let's. I think that's.
plucked in the right spot. This bottom edge is three and some low. So if we're we locked in at one, we should go on two, three. Oh, it is plus four. Uh -huh. The wording is like. is like almost what I would expect, except for some reason this like ended up overlapping ourselves. Drawing one too many spaces. And it should be impossible for us to move past. So we start here, two away, we move, we get walled, we move, we get walled. How come here? get walled here. Here, why doesn't it say wall? That's concerning. ourselves here and let's only look at a few rocks see we should shift over here but why are we not five there's plenty of room here now Set at two four. We should be moving. Hmm. Why is this? Oh my 
god, I just didn't have this stuff on the clipboard properly? Is that what is wrong? Something interrupted my clipboard. 25. Oh. No, I'm not quite right. Okay. Doing this weird thing where it collides with itself. Also, okay, so it's spawning incorrectly, it's just this should have moved over one. Okay. I'm curious about that. This all seems right. We spawn in here with a 1, 2, 3 gap. 1, 2, 3, yeah. I'm gonna be selecting stuff, so just for now, we're doing that. Okay, the biggest problem is... the right position but then we don't lock it into place in the right spot Yeah. 
here, and then here. I mean, I feel like this is right. That's only spawning the new one. Is three correct in this case? We land here. How tall is our stack? Oh, we're actually three tall. Oh, I mean four. Okay, that's right. We were right without this. But how come the simulation is wrong? We want 2022 20, different rocks. I feel like this seems right. Like we only make one more progress here. Well, actually, yeah, two more progress. Then we only make one more progress. Yeah, the simulation seems correct. Cycling the correct shapes too, I think. We advance to the next rock, only in this case, we... Seems about right to me. This 
lose 10 different rocks? Just like try it. Do I really just have to like... Hmm. Maybe it's important to... So we definitely make it all the way around, and we still seem to be making the correct moves. All I can think of is doing my favorite thing. At least this makes for interesting stream content. Here we go! Um, I guess we only care about... Let's sleep for a little longer. And we only care about... Maybe. What is with this one that like does a kind of weird that one? It, it 
does eventually move, I see. Uh, it's because I'm not printing it here. fun animation. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to help me figure out. I guess my point is that it doesn't look like any illegal moves are happening. Oh wait, that's kind of... Oh, that No, that's kind of weird. It spawns in too low. Ugh. Wait, this was... this was wrong here. That's the problem. I had that right before and then I changed it. I know how to solve this, but we wasted so much time in part one that the part two solution will probably be crazy. So we we want to look for when we spawn, we we need to look for a cycle. Okay, so. Um, how long is our pattern? Okay. Sure, our pattern's like 5,000 characters. So we go 5,000... Wait. It's... Okay, this is a prime number. So, the greatest common multiple of this is 5 different types of rocks. We look at, once we've completed a full cycle of 50,000, we go and we look at the state of the ground, and we see if we've seen it before. If we have, we've successfully hit a cycle. So we need lowest common multiple is going to equal the length of pattern um, times the length of called shapes. Um, and these are scenes. So if the rock number makes it to the multiple, we want to look at everything in the highest row and see if we've seen that pattern before. Um, so this is last highest, it's going to be zero. Um, let's, let me think. We're spawning in a new piece here. Do we want to do the check here? 
check for us like a while. So two hard part twos in a row. Or three three rather tricky problems in a row. But I think I understand how to solve this one at least. Um, so we look at the top row. Um, so it's going to be the key is going to be joining dot get uh, point um, x highest default to a space um, for x in range seven. If uh, rocks mod LCM is equal to zero. Uh, scenes dot. If key in scenes um, Yeah, so we, we hit a cycle. Um if we fit in a cycle, we want to do some math, and then we're out of here. Otherwise, we say it's going to be... Uh, highest minus last highest, and then highest equals last highest, or last highest equals highest. So this is our cycle, and then we can just do one more round of simulation to get to well. We could then just move on to doing a final simulation and get ourselves all the way to the delta, right? get to a repeat, what do we do with that information? I guess... So we cycle after 18.21, the height every time Every cycle of that many rocks, we should s just move up 1821, right? So, we basically run that, and then we run it one final time. We do that many multiples, and then we can return. So... Um, I didn't structure this in, in the greatest way, really. So I think it's gonna have to be pretty manual. Uh, it's the highest, and the cycle length is gonna be... Um, rocks. Or I guess LCM, right? So every 200... Rocks. They put us 13 and we have 5. Wait. Oh, wait. Uh, the length of pattern. And then this will be. Yeah, 40 times 5 rocks is 200. So we're gonna. Every 200, we get this answer, so then we just want to figure out, um, so we need two pieces of information, right? 
we need to figure out um, if rocks is equal to, it's going to be the LCM, or no, it's going to be equal to um, target floor division divided by um, our LCM, print how many we need to know how many rocks we're at. We need to know where the highest point is. Oh wait, no, it's the cycle length. Oh, it's the difference. Oh, it's... In this case, it's not prime. Um, we want the remainder. Is it a whole number? Is it just equal multiple? Uh, I, I want one cycle though. Uh, so we just we mod this and it's equal to zero, but we want to do it after one full cycle of the LCM, so it's... In my head, I know what I want. The remainder of target divided by... Like, this is the cycle length. It's gonna be zero, so... I, I guess in this case, it's just the answer is just going to be what um, here. It's like highest times, and then how many times does target divide uh, our cycle length? So here, we had to cycle 12, is this the right order of magnitude? <laughs> I need to Ooh, look, look what we have here. Yeah, it is, cool. So we're getting a little bit closer to closer. How far off? I guess the delta, it's like, which which one specifically did we repeat? Okay, 
Okay, that's not helpful. I guess it's this one. So we've got a repeat of this one. We're currently at rocks, and the last time we saw it was at... So this is a cycle of, the cycle is only like, hmm, 320 and it's going to con- hmm, It will keep on repeating this because the moves will be equivalent every 320. So we have to count the height of everything before plus the delta between that is going to, yeah, it'll be that many rocks. have been placed and then you just compute how many more we need to add to get that far oh god the math makes the math makes my head hurt but i do think it's correct I just need to reason this out. So So this is the the before is going to be equal to last highest. That's how many before rocks we get. Then we have to compute so, um, new target equals target, new target minus equals before rocks. Then we have to compute how many versions of cycle can we fit in to the remainder. So it's going to be fit remainder. So um, x is going to equal new target floor division. Um, the, the cycle, so cycle length is going to equal uh, highest minus last highest. We're going to increment by that many rocks. that came before plus the the cycle length um, so that's the highest I think we, we also have to keep track of last rocks the number of rocks between the cycles right Time 
ourselves by cycle rocks. And then we're just gonna finish up the simulation. Oh, I guess I have to increment the height, right? So we have to increment the number of rocks, and we also have to increment the number of height. Adding this many cycles, so logically it's something like this. Kinda complicated. You also want to like clone the board region because it has to finish up the cycle. Because that rock is just falling in. Oh, we don't have to do that, we just do this implicitly. Bonus. What am I thinking? Bonus height is going to be x times cycle height. Because it's cyclic. Ironically, whatever we had before was a lot closer, even though I think this is actually correct. Or more correct. Okay. Let's even this out. So... 
height is highest and then C key. Right? So we repeated this pattern. Um, and I kind of want to convince myself that this is reasonable, so I'm going to say I need to convince myself that this is actually correct. So here, we see this, um, these are things below it, here we see this, here we see this, here we see this, uh, is it negative? Yeah. Here we see this, here we see this again, oh, it's not exactly a cycle. I'm curious, let's just go take a look see how fast it get there. Oh people are fast. So we've seen... Oh, I see. No, it, it is cyclic. Look at that. Oh, but... Oh, I'm just computing my... Ugh, I'm computing this wrong, but look. This is the exact same as this. And it's cyclic, so... I'm just being really dumb. Really, what this should be is our height and the number of rocks we've seen. Uh, so, last highest, last rocks is going to equal scenes.key. So, we repeated this. The length of the cycle is this. Great.
So we can increment this many rocks. Okay, it's just like a somewhat reasonable order of magnitude. So the cycle is that high over this number is really bad. Ourselves here. I think we saw a cycle, we should be jumping ahead a whole heck of a lot more than this. Yeah, we should be at this many rocks. Everything else should stay equivalent, it's just we moved up a bunch of rocks and our, our implicit height has increased too by the corresponding amount. And... Like, well, oh, I guess Psycho Rocks isn't necessarily a... close now. I, I'm, I'm liking... Oh. Yeah, we're off by this much. But this seems promising. I think the logic is reasonable. We just picked the wrong cycle. We need to look a bit deeper.
but it looks slightly different. Okay, I mean, you just increase the key. Pretty similar to this frame. Our goal is this value. We're off by only a few million somehow. Our math is little wrong, you might say. If we add more to the key... I ideally want something that goes in for that. Uh, 24. Oh, yeah, this gets even closer, so we just cr we're cranking up the key length until we find. Um, 
Yeah. We're getting closer. I think this is like approximately. Oh wait, no, we're not getting close. Oh wait, we are. Oh, we're very close. Oh, we're so close to the right answer. Does cranking this up actually do it? change anything at this point? I think. Once this has something that's fully segmented and you know, like in, I don't think it matters anymore. So now it's just a math diff. I'm off by 2000 somehow because doing math is hard. My height is here at this point, and I want the 48 number. Oh, so we already overshot by a bit our math. I think we're off a bit by our math. So. to get we want to repeat cycle as many times as we can so we had a series of oh it's We're pretty close! <laughs> this is promising. This is just because... Oh, wait. The cycle length is this. We're at this height with this many... This math is not right. We need to go rocks, many more rocks. Oh, we're so this many more rocks. So our cycle is based on that cycle size. We checked that length in the mod. Oh. 
I think we just, we also just want to simulate the rest of it though. We probably, we don't want to overshoot how many cycles we're doing. Um, we're gonna subtract off more for good measure. Uh, wait, we did the number of rocks that we're currently at. We can afford how many times can we fit the cycle length in, which is X. Great. Oh, this is incorrect. We don't want to reset that, right? Wow, we're off by one? Do I just go for this? Like, okay, I mean, I think it's worth going for it. We're allegedly off by one here. Okay, um, what if we run it? I guess it's much harder for us to find a, a valid cycle. There's a point where this ends up. Mm. I don't like how fishy this number looks. We see a cycle so early on in
like we're trying to find something cyclic that corresponds to a full block and we're on the same piece would be ideal I wonder if that exists. Maybe I should just check that. So it does exist in this, and ostensibly it also exists in the sample. Hard to get a full block, right? I guess I should know that. If, wait, there, there was one right there. I just saw it. Six, seven. Hello? Um. How do we test this? Just crazy coincidence that we are one off here. But I'm gonna keep this file around just in case because um, I don't think this is representative of the logic being correct. Or actually, the logic is probably correct, it's just... Um, this doesn't scale up to the actual example because we constantly have to make this... ...bigger. Like, this is only provably correct once, if the key segment, yeah, we get that. If, see, we're fully blocked off here, which means since this falls under the same cyclic pattern, it must be a repetition. Add a rock. 
it's as if we just like jump up to something much higher. I don't think we're supposed to add one rock. Oh, the mod becomes. Ins Wait, why am I taking a mod? I don't. I don't use the mod. I just try to jump forward this many rocks, right? And then we jump up that much height, and we add that many rocks back makes sense that the mod is equal to that, and then we just finish up the simulation. Oh, wait, it's because I was mi supposed to be minus one. Okay, wait, this answer looks correct. Oh. Okay. Well, okay, we'll see if we can get an answer out of this. But the keys are too, too ununique, I feel. Like the fact that this is prime feels like you can just do a single simulation and or like do it this many times and then you know insert it into there but I feel like that doesn't work for this because at the time of a perfect cycle you wouldn't necessarily be on the correct um, piece back again. So I'm going to try to get a valid answer by trying a bunch of different key lights.
fast, but of course, the key language was big enough. Um, actually, I can uncomment all of this, because it's actually useful. I think we just try a bunch of like varying key sizes till we hit something reasonable. These numbers are all too high. What is this? This is higher than something. That was too high. So I don't think that's it. So let's try this. something that's like a pattern that's completely enclosing. Okay, it's a slightly lower number. We got this first key size of 10. If we start to see some convergence, like this pattern here doesn't seem safe enough to consider a repeat. And I suspect that the cycle on this is like intentionally creating. There's a lot of possibility for like the pieces to not line up, right? The input is long enough that it could be crafted such that the moves respawn a square, respawn this. I guess this, like for example, it could be a lot of rights to force these pieces all to the side here, and then this guy drops down really far. I'm gonna let these run for a bit and see if we get anything special. If they seem to converge with this as well, then maybe we just accept it. submit this too aggressively because we already had quite a few wrong answers so we would be hitting up a we'd be getting a pretty long delay on our next submission. So Yeah, it's really interesting that this gives the right answer. Logically, it's correct to give the right answer, but I'm honestly just surprised. I 
mean, this can probably be optimized by at the end of a cycle, you also key on the specific stone that we're at. So we're only. No. I think that's hard. Oh. Okay. Oh, well, we got something. This is like a different repetition. If we converge and get a similar answer, that gives me more confidence in submitting. <laughs> This is why. <sighs> Let's just try it. No, five minute timeout. to be every okay the, the pattern length is prime which makes it so every repetition of of the wind pattern you land on a different stone that's about to be placed so that becomes an additional part of the key Is there anything else we go? I I'm pretty sure this like this is just intentionally created so that on a really long time interval, like one super long piece just travels down infinite, I bet. Unless we can convince ourselves that that doesn't happen. Which since I have to wait five minutes anyways, maybe it's worth doing. does the furthest ridiculous long line piece go? If I do it on the sample...
Alright, so the furthest that uh, a line piece goes in the sample or that a piece travels is looks to be 12. Blockage. It's a full blockage, which means this this has to be a fully repeating cycle. Right? Once the rest of the simulation finishes up. But what what is up with this? Answer. Excellent, excellent. Um, I guess I can go over it and at the same time clean up the code. Uh, let me just switch things over. Yeah, I'll take some time to jump into real time and uh, adjust the stream, I guess, and then go over it a bit just so that stuff can be happening in real time. So I'll be back in a bit with this. Okay, uh, we should be back again in real time now, which is pretty fun. And we can hop into going through this problem. Now my code looks completely awful. So I'm going to be uh, cleaning it up as we go, but we can talk through the general parts of the problem first, um, and then I'll explain a bit of what my code is doing. Um, so, right, so. Um, today, day 17, is called Pyroclastic Flow, um, and essentially it's a game of Tetris that gets simulated. And so there are these different types of pieces. Um, the dot here doesn't mean anything, just think of these as the, uh, are they called tetronomos? I mean, they're not pentaminos because some of them only have four pieces in them, right? Wouldn't that be a quad? But either way, there's these five types of rocks that appear from this cave, I guess. Um, and they fall from the roof in this particular order. The line and the plus and L vertical line and then the two by two. And it cycles over and over again. And the input for today's puzzle is this the jet pattern. And basically what this means is every tick of the game, the jets will try to push the current piece either to the right or to the left, if it's possible. Um, 
it's a very tall vertical chamber and it's exactly seven units wide with walls on either side and then there's some rules about what happens to a piece so a rock will spawn in then we pick the next move in the list and the jet of gas pushes the rock um, then the rock tries to fall down one. So in this case, it's successful, it falls. The next move was moving right, and so the jet of, ca jet of gas tries to push it to the right again, but it gets blocked by the sides of the corridor, and so nothing happens, but it does fall because of gravity. It tries to go right again, nothing happens because of gravity, um, nothing happens because of the wall, gravity pulls it down, then one final jet of gas, this time it's a left moving one, pushes it to the left and finally because it's touching um, something and can't go down anymore, it s comes to rest, at which point another rock appears. And the rock always appears with a two gap here um, from its leftmost wall and three in between its bottom uh, most portion. And so this continues indefinitely, and when you get to the end of the jet pattern, you start again at the very beginning. And so part one basically just asks, simulate this for 2022 20, different rocks. How tall is the resulting structure? So depending on how these all line up, this structure right, will have a given height, and the problem wants you to figure that out. So... Um, for this problem, you basically just encode the rules of the game, right? So it took me a while to get there uh, due to writing a bunch of different bugs, but um, so this is me saying, uh, so 3068 is what you would expect from the sample here. And the way that you get there is, say this is how many rocks you want to get. Um, I guess we can get rid of the minus ones like this and just make it this. Um, so we basically just encode the game. Um, you can ignore all of this stuff for now. It's not relevant. It's relevant for uh, part two. But so for part one, we say, I just want to keep track of the piece that's currently falling. And so if I see that there's no piece falling, I will make a new rock, which I'll grab from this array based on, you know, you keep track of which rock is the next one to fall and I'm gonna grab them. So I'm gonna just represent the rock pretty dumbly as a list of either four or five points. Um, and then I'll just say that's the current rock. Then you have to offset it and position it correctly uh, in the tunnel. And so the rules say it starts uh, three above the, the highest rock that's here. So I guess a specific example of this is, um, let's see, here, right? The, the tallest point in this structure so far is here. So this rock should appear one, two, three, four higher than the highest point. So we keep track of the highest point once a rock settles and we shift the piece we're grabbing, right? The, the current rock we're on as the index into our shapes array and we mod by shape so that we keep cycling through them all. We shift up by four to put it in the right vertical position and over to the right by two to put it in the right horizontal position. And this works because of the way that these points have been defined. Um, they're defined such that that transformation will always bring them to the correct point relative to uh, highest, which is always tracking like this row, this is highest, this is highest, and then shifting over by two brings the left wall over to here. So. Then we look at what move we're currently on, right? And or in the jet. If we're moving right, we have to check two things. We have to make sure we're not gonna bump up into the wall. And we also have to make sure that um, another piece that has already been placed isn't blocking us. So that's what the second check is. 
Um, so does the right wall block us? Does another p uh, piece or rock at rest block us? Um, if neither of these are blocking us, then we shift over to the right. The music just improved. Is there music going right now on stream? I thought there shouldn't be. Oh, maybe you can hear it leaking through my headphones? I'm not sure. Uh, sorry if it's distracting and or if there actually is music or there isn't. Um, I'm listening to great music right now, but I have it turned, I thought I had it turned off on the stream during the uh, explainy parts to make it easier to hear. Um, but you do similar logic here for, for the left side, just that obviously you check against the left wall and you move to the left um, and you check that there's nothing like impeding us in the way uh, if we were to go left. So try to move the rock falling rock based on the, what do they call it, the jet? Jet of gas, great. Now we're here. Um, do we come to rest? So now we have to check um, based on our new position, are we going to fall like onto the ground basically? Um, or are we resting upon another rock? So we look at all of the points below us and if, there, if any of them contain a piece at rest, then we know we should come to rest as well. So if we do, we kind of freeze ourselves. So we encode this into the board. Uh, we kind of like draw the symbols like that. And we also track what the current highest point is because the current rock coming to rest might have created a new high point, like here. The high point used to be here, but when this comes to rest, the high point is up here now. So we track that here. Then we reset the uh, current piece to nothing so that it'll get drawn up again um, here, and then we also increment the number of rocks that we're at. Otherwise, if we don't come to rest, we just fall down one. And because of this check, we know that we can always move down one successfully. Um, great. So if we run this on the, you know, on the sample input, um, okay, this is confusing. If we run this on the sample input, we get 3068, uh, which is what's expected. And if you run this on the real input, you get 3171, uh, which was the correct answer. So that's part one. Part two says we didn't impress the elephants and they want to know how tall the tower is after one. Uh, so this would be million here. This would be billion here, one trillion. So they don't care that we can compute up to uh, 2022. We, they want us to know how tall it's going to be after a trillion iterations. So we change the target. How tall will the tower be after trillion iterations? It'll be, let's see, one, two, three, four, 1 1.5 trillion units tall. Great. So this is not feasible to calculate. Um, we can't really simulate this. So we need to find a more clever way of doing it. And the intuition here is thinking about cycles. So let's try to demonstrate this. Um, what is the most reasonable way to do this? I'm going to do it like this. So. The pattern is of a given length, right? So we are going to do this move and this move and this move and go all the way around and come back to do this move again. Likewise, the rocks that we're on are also, um, oh, wait, I'm just trying to think. Did I just get lucky? If rocks, oh, huh. 
Huh. I'm starting to think I got lucky with this calculation right here because I don't think this is right. The The intuition was you can have a commonality of a cycle of moves being placed by taking the number of uh, moves here times what how many rocks there are and then we'll always come back at the same position. We're basically looking for some cyclic behavior uh, in this. So for example, if the moves were going just right, left, right, left, right, left, and we saw somewhere along the uh, structure of this that, you know, we saw a big thing like this, and then we saw it repeat itself like a thousand up, we know that since it was exactly that many moves apart, um, the behavior must repeat itself between here and here. Uh, so if this happened at, for example, y equals or the 200th rock, and we see this pattern emerge again on the 1000th rock, we know that every 800 rocks, we're going to have the exact same repetition of uh, movement. Uh, and you can do that, you know that because you know the cycle of the moves and you see that they created the same kind of top to the tower. And so rather than doing a full simulation of a trillion different moves, once you've established a cycle, you basically say, well, I know every 800 moves, I'm going to move up by a thousand height. And I know rather than simulate eight, that cycle of period 800, you know, like a billion times, just say, I'm going to move up uh, 1000 times a billion in height. And I'm going to move that many rocks into the future. So you basically cheat by jumping ahead as far as you can and then finishing off the rest of the simulation because there might be a remainder to get to the actual number of exactly one trillion. And so that's what we do here where every time we finish the cycle of the um, jet pattern here, we look at the top of the, uh, the height of the tower basically. And if the height of the tower looks like something we've seen before, we identify the cycle and we do some math to figure out, well, how big, how long was the cycle in terms of rocks and how high did we go? And then do math to do that jumping ahead into the future. And so that's what this looks like. Um, I think we don't need this anymore because we're not printing it. But what happens if I run this? Oh, this is too slow. Yeah, so this required this uh the solution required a bit of trial and error because we don't exactly know how tall and maybe there is a better way to do this, uh I guess analytically, but we don't know how big of a segment of the top of the tower we need to check, right? Like for example here, this isn't good enough. If we only checked, oh, look for this as a repetition, just because you saw this doesn't necessarily mean we're in a true cycle, right? Because the thing below it might be like stone, stone, stone. And that would be different from what we see here. And so it required on my behalf a bit of trial and error to uh, coax the right answer out of the problem. But if you've established a cycle, you want to see to do the math, figure out when was the last time you saw that hat of the tower. Um, we saw it this many rocks ago, and we're going to, um, the different delta in height between then and now is this. And based on that math, we can basically compute, well, how many rocks in the future do we want to jump? So um, jump. So we want to go n cycles into the future. We're going to say at the end of the day, pretend we have this much height. Well, it'll be how many cycles we did times the height of how big the cycle was and how many rocks in the future should we jump? Well, that's just how many cycles we decided to take. 
times how many rocks were involved uh, in this cycle. So last being the last time we saw this hat and rocks being now what we see. So we can see some convergence where if I'm just running against a sample input now, this is the wrong answer here. Uh, and actually, we need to copy this. I think I accidentally highlighted something else. So this isn't good enough. But if we keep playing around with the key height and make it bigger, um, this right here is a pretty good structure. Um, the, the scary part of seeing this, something like this, is there might be a possibility that that long line piece um, you know, comes in and the jets kind of blow it in and like pull it all the way down. And the stuff we see below is different from what's actually above us. So I guess that was my big concern. It turns out that's probably actually not the case and you probably can formalize something about there's some maximum arrangement or like height of a key you can use before you guaranteed distinctness. Um, the the trade-off that you make for making this key bigger to make it consider a taller slice of the tower is that it's obviously harder to find an exact repetition of it, right? And the interesting thing is we don't need an exact um, cycle actually. We just need something stable enough that as we repeat the uh, input pattern with the same number of rocks, there one isn't going to fall down unexpectedly compared to the other. So we're actually looking for, if I crank this up a lot on the sample input, um, kind of like a hard barrier. If there were like big, a long line that no other stones, rocks could pass through, that's kind of like a good cutoff point. Like here, you know, nothing you drop is going to be affecting anything below it because this point, this is like a, oh, you're stuck area. So anyways, that's the logic um, of, of this problem that I ended up following. I got baited a bit by some wrong answers where if we run this on the real input, right, and we say, oh, use only a key height of, key height of 10, we get a false positive for a cycle, and it turns out to be wrong. And even 15, you can see I named my tmux pane here. Um, 15 was giving us a wrong answer too. Uh, I wonder how close were we actually with the 15 example. Yeah, we were still off by quite a bit. But then when we actually went to, yeah, so this is the wrong answer, right? Once we actually shifted it up to the key height being 20, it takes a long time because the problem input is um, the real input's 10,000 moves long. So you have to simulate at least 10,000 times five times to even generate a key to store and kind of cache for later. So it happens quite infrequently, but it does terminate in order of like a couple minutes as opposed to hours or days or years. So and uh, simulating this, uh, yikes, that's probably not the right way to go. Though maybe if you're really efficient about the simulation, I wonder, like a trillion operations, like you, you can do that. Maybe if I had been just running this in the background, the answer would have been found while I was trying to solve this clever way. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's today's problem. Um, I'm happy I ended up getting it. Part two. Part two was fun to work through. It's the um, classic every month has a, uh, by the way, simulate this a bunch of times, but you can use um, periodicity to not simulate the whole thing type of a question. Part one just took me a long time because for some reason I couldn't encode the rules of this game properly. But yeah, that's day 17. So uh, back to doing at least we finished both uh, things in one sitting, but it still took a lot longer than uh, I would have liked. But anyways, thank you for watching if you're watching.